Hi everyone, I'm Kelly McVicker, founder of McVicker Pickles, and I am here in my home kitchen in the Lower Haight, uh, right here in San Francisco, and I'm going to today show you guys how to make a delicious fermented curtido using fresh vegetables that I got from the Ferry Plaza Farmer's Market. Um, I don't know about you guys, but when I found out that, you know, all the stores were being closed due to the virus outbreak, one of my first thoughts was I really, really hoped that the farmer's markets would be able to stay open because that's kind of my first stop. I go every week and, um, you know, especially right now when we're trying to eat healthy, hopefully to kind of balance out being inside, it's a great time to, one, go back to the winter vegetables that are, are kind of cycling out of season, like the cabbage and carrot and things that we're going to be working with today. Um, but two, to make fermented things. Fermented things take a little bit of time, but we've got a lot of time on our hands right now at home, right? And the benefit is um, really beyond just the, the vitamin C that you get a lot inherently in the cabbage. When you ferment things, you get the addition of the probiotic benefit. So that's what we're getting today is a lot of good bacteria to kind of repopulate our guts, you know, since we've been dousing ourselves in antibacterials lately. So. I'm going to start off by showing you guys how to slice the cabbage. It's very simple. Um, you go ahead and cut your cabbage in half. Uh, sort of, this is a little bit halved, but you get the idea. A little bit more than half. Um, and then once you've done that, you want to kind of just find an angle where you can have a good base and start slicing and shredding down the side. You want to go pretty thin. Don't worry if some pieces get a little thicker than others. But what we're trying to do is just get kind of a nice ribbon cut that will wilt down um, and get, you know, kind of a little bit smaller once we add the salt and crunch it up. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in my bowl. And you would add the red cabbage to this as well um, for the sake of kind of speeding things up. I'm not going to chop it all right now. But you would be adding both, so a whole head of green cabbage and red cabbage into the bowl. So the next thing you're going to do is we're going to take a carrot. So any type of carrot would work. Um, I've got some of these rainbow carrots over here. I'm just going to use a plain, good old-fashioned orange one. And go ahead and grate it directly on top of that cabbage. You could also do a thin slice, but I kind of, I enjoy the sort of shredding action of this grater. And, you know, be careful. Once you get to the edge, you don't have to go all to the end. Just kind of grate it finely. And then you can save this little nub for soup stock or something like that. Okay. Then you're going to do one onion, one whole onion, also sliced pretty thin, about like this. Uh, hopefully you guys can see the kind of size of the slice. We're trying to kind of mimic um, the shred of the cabbage here. So adding that onion in. Now, if you want to make it a little bit more spicy, you could use a Fresno pepper or a jalapeno or even a habanero. And same thing, just really thin little slices to add that in. This is kind of optional only if you want to add a little extra spice. But the benefit too is you get a lot of extra color with it, which looks really beautiful in the jar. So adding that in. We want three cloves of garlic minced. Gone ahead and mince those here. So plop those into the bowl. So right now it's just kind of a, a really beautiful salad. We've got the cabbage, we've got uh, the onion, the carrot, the pepper. It's kind of like a dry, almost like a coleslaw right now. Now we are going to add our spices. So we are doing one healthy tablespoon of cumin seed. And if you want to toast it in a pan dry before you add it, that brings out even more flavor. Totally optional. Uh, one tablespoon of Mexican oregano. Regular, you know, any oregano works. Mexican is just a little bit, uh, I think, an earthier flavor than Italian. It's a little bit sweeter. Uh, we want to do one tablespoon of dried chili flake. You could reduce that if you wanted to make it, you know, a little bit more mild. And then the last thing I'm going to do is take a bay leaf and just kind of crumble that in my fingers, nice and tiny little bits, and then just kind of let it float down into the bowl. All right, and then finally, the salt. Salt is the really probably the most important thing we're adding here. Um, in addition to helping kind of keep the bacteria that would normally cause this to spoil under wraps, keep it from spoiling, uh, adding the salt also draws the moisture out of the cabbage. 
And so it's really going to help us create a brine because essentially what we're going to do is try to pull the moisture out of this cabbage enough to the point that we have enough liquid to pack it all underwater. So I did one tablespoon, another tablespoon, so two and a half. So two and a half tablespoons of salt. Um, I'm using just plain sea salt. You want to use a salt that's not iodized. So sea salt, uh, pickling salt is good. Anything that doesn't have iodide added to it. Kosher salt even uh, can work as well. So now I'm just really getting in here and kind of pressing it with my hands, crunching it up. You know, you can really kind of get aggressive with it. It's not like when you make bread, um, you can't overdo it. It's not like, you know, over kneading it is a problem. So you can really just get in there and kind of crunch it up. So for the sake of speeding this up, I went ahead and made some ahead of time. So what you would do now after you kind of crunch it for two or three minutes and, and kind of squeeze it with your hands, you would let it, you would set it aside and let it rest. So once it's sat for, you know, 30 minutes, 20, 30 minutes, um, this is one that I made a little bit earlier to show you. So this is what it's going to look like after it's had that time to sit. You can see it's wilted down a lot. This bowl was almost completely like full of cabbage. It's wilted down. Um, it's getting more pliable, more soft. And I'll bring this a little closer, hopefully, so to show you guys. This liquid, this brine, if I squeeze, it just oozes out of there. And you can see it pooling in the bottom of the bowl. That's exactly what we want to see because that means that we've, again, pulled that liquid, liquid out of the cabbage and um, that's going to be the juice that we pack it in. So you probably will get enough from this recipe if you use a full head of red and green cabbage to make about, I'd say like about two of these quart sized jars. So I'm just going to kind of start packing one to show you what that would look like. I'll take a big handful. Kind of start packing, pressing it down in there. It's going to look full, um, you know, when you put a full handfuls, a few handfuls in there. But once you start pressing, you want to really work it down into the jar, making sure that you're getting any air pockets out, that it's nicely kind of packed tightly. And as I do that, you can kind of see that the brine level, the juice level is rising up. It's already kind of coming up towards the top. So you keep doing that and pressing it down. Um, the goal of this, at the end, what we want to have is a jar that's completely submerged under the liquid. So again, magic of television. Here's one that I did a little ahead of time. Um, this is what it should essentially look like at the end. You see I have all of my curtido here pressed below the liquid. What I did is I just took one of these outer leaves of cabbage. So you take like one of these healthy kind of bigger tough leaves on the outside and use that to press it down and kind of make basically it blocks those little tiny shreddy cabbage pieces from rising up above. So you can use two or three of those, press it down, um, and again, eventually this is what we're going for, something with this level of liquid that well covers everything. The reason that's important is that if anything rises above that liquid level, it's going to get oxygen exposure to the air, and that's potentially going to cause it to spoil, basically bringing in bacteria from the environment and kind of going throughout the whole ferment and causing it to get, you know, not, not sour in a good way, but sour in a way that's like, smells bad, smells rotten, and you're going to throw it out. So that's not what we want. So at all times, again, everything below the brine like that. Um, and then finally, this will just sit at your countertop for anywhere from four to ten days. Fermentation works, the way that it works, the longer you leave things out, the more sour they become. So I would say taste it on day four, leaving the lid on tightly and just making sure you release the pressure if it looks like it's building up a lot. Taste it on day four. If you like it then, stick it in the fridge. If you would like to leave it out and let it get more sour and more kind of funky, you know, ferment fizziness, uh, leave it out for a few more days. But once you decide that you like the flavor, go ahead and seal it up tightly and put it in the fridge. This will last anywhere from, you know, two to three months easily in your fridge, probably longer, but that's going to be the sweet spot in terms of the texture and the flavor being the best. Um, so that's it. You know, just a few fresh ingredients, the salt, and really the time to kind of let, for, let it sit and ferment, and, and that's what it takes to make a delicious curtido. Um, I want to just point out that, again, the farmer's markets are open. So the Ferry Plaza is open, the farmer, farmer's market there is open. Um, 
for me right now when I'm not like super excited about going to the grocery store and standing in lines and being the kind of tension and stress that exists there, uh, shopping outside and knowing that the produce that I buy has gone through you know, as few hands as possible to get to me, especially right now, feels really important. Um, and then finally, I want to let you know that this recipe that I just showed you is in my book, Essential Vegetable Fermentation. It is coming out next Tuesday, March 24th. And you can go ahead and pre-order on Amazon now, or once it's out on the 24th, you can find it in your local bookstores or their online website. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, we would love to hear what you're making at home right now, what you're doing with your time, the time you have on your hands at home, and also what you'd like to see. Are there any recipes, fermented or otherwise, that you'd like to see Quesa and the Ferry Plaza Farmer's Market uh, share with you? So uh, let us know in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a great day.